Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Praise God. Elijah was a prophet of God. He was a man of the Spirit. He was fervent. And I believe Elijah and Elisha fall in the same class and category of the anointing. And those two prophets, if you've read the story, you realize they are very distinctively different from any other prophets that are written down in Scripture. Are you following me? Elijah and Elisha seem to fall in the same category of the prophetic. And I'll explain that. One, these are two prophets that are found in the book of Kings, but number two, there has not been prophets in the history, of biblical history, that have demonstrated the power of God like Elijah and Elisha. Those two guys were on another level. And there are things some of us read, and sometimes we take them for granted, but if you for a moment go back and reflect and think for a minute, the consequence of the anointing that was on Elijah, that man was greatly anointed. He was greatly anointed. That Tishibite was greatly, greatly, greatly anointed. And I'll explain that a bit later in the few things that I'm going to share. Elijah is one of the men that made me love the anointing. If you're talking of the anointing, you see, even what we give is what some of you are able to take, but not necessarily what we have seen in God. I wish sometimes we could fully express and give to you what we feel in the inside. The anointing of God is so great when you experience it. Some people don't know that whatever you see demonstrated outside is actually coming out of a man's spirit. You understand what I'm saying? It's not coming from air. It's not just coming from heaven to fall on you, no. It's coming out of a man's spirit. Remember, he says, for out of you shall flow rivers of living water. God has greatly set a heavy anointing for your life. And once that anointing comes upon you or starts to function in your life, you can never be the same again. You can never be the same again. There's something pertaining to the anointing that goes just beyond, yes, the healing the sick is the anointing. It's powerful. But there are, there's another place in the anointing. There's something higher than just healing the sick. There's, this is the hand of God upon your life. Let me give you an example, typical example. This man says, he goes to Ahab, you remember the story, and he says that from today there shall not be rain for three years. You remember that story? And the Bible says, and ravens came and fed that man bread and meat morning and evening. While the Israelites were lacking, Elijah was eating bread and meat every morning and evening. By the way, before I go into that, there's a mystery there. The godly way to eat is two meals a day. If you're not fasting, two meals a day. Two, they're enough. Eat your heavy breakfast, wonderful. Then reconcile something where that four, five, or six, seven is up to you. You're good. Or if you do lunch, don't eat supper. Have you lunch that? But this man is fed by ravens. Because God needs to maintain the anointed. You understand? Some people cannot imagine the boldness that this man has when he faces Ahab and he tells him, bring your 450 Baal prophets, the 400 of the groves, that's about 850 men, and then he tells them, you kill a bull, I kill a bull, in it, prepare it, put it on the altar, and the Lord that answereth by fire, he is God. If the Baal prophets had not seen fire before, they would not have tried it. Who has understood what I just said? If the Baal prophets had never seen fire from heaven before, this is not a mystery. Even people who know, you know, ancient stories of Egyptian sorcery, they would tell you Egyptians used to call for fire from heaven all the time. Even one of the prophecies given by Jesus in the end time, he tells you, even if a man calls fire from heaven and says, I'm the Christ, believe them not. Because it was ancient magic that men used to call fire from heaven. But that was a day. 
no man could call fire from heaven. You understand what I'm saying? He tells them, no, perhaps he's journeying, he's on the leave, he's on sleep. Try to shake him up again and see what will happen. Hallelujah. And then they shake him up. And then they do everything. In fact, the Bible says some even started to cut and slit themselves according to the man of Baal worship. And no fire came up. And this man gets the same bowl, puts it on 12 stones, which represented the 12 tribes of Israel, the Bible tells us. He dressed it well. He told them, pour water. They poured water under that altar until the altar was full of water. And the altar had stone. It had only stone, meat, and, and water, and, and, and sand around. And the Bible says, I want you to, to see this. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And the Bible says he put wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. And so he said, do it the second time. He said, do it the third time. They were just pouring water, water on the wood and on the sacrifice and around. And the water ran round about the altar and he filled the trench with the water. Hallelujah. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of any subjects that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac. He didn't say Jacob, he said Israel. Because the stones were 12 and they were representing the covenant that Jacob had with God when he encountered him that day. You remember when God encounters him and he tells him from today henceforth, thou art not Jacob, but thou art Israel, for thou hast wrestled with God and hast overcome. The overcoming there means that you have encountered an experience. So he doesn't call him as the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He calls him the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I'm, I am thy servant and that I've done all these things at thy word. Listen, the Bible says, next verse, Hear me, O Lord, hear me that these people may know that thou art the Lord God and thou hast turned their hearts back again. And the Bible says the fire of God fell. Listen, it consumed the burnt sacrifice, consumed the wood, the stones, and the dust. Imagine everything consumed that even the dust that is around the altar, God carries it. And, and I think that day, they just woke up and they saw a big hole, a big ditch. And God had consumed it. Man, that guy was anointed. That man was anointed. That man was anointed. He was anointed. Everybody who saw it that day fell on their feet. Remember the time before the rain comes. And then the raven stopped feeding him. And then the Lord tells him, go to a widow, I've commanded her. You remember when he goes to the widow? He says, I've commanded her. Now, there's an instruction there that the Lord spoke to me long, long ago. Interestingly, do you realize he comes to the woman, she doesn't seem to have a clue. Yet God says, I have instructed her. So sometimes the question is, how does the Lord instruct you? Because some people don't hear the voice of instruction. Some people don't understand how God instructs. You understand what I'm saying? That woman's household never ran out of oil and food. And in that same process, remember, the woman's kid died. Now, sometimes I hear people with foolish arguments, eh? very foolish arguments, and sometimes I wonder how they think, eh? and I'm going to say that. Because if that woman used to hang around foolish people and her child died, you know someone would come to her and tell her, you know why that woman died? You brought the prophet in your house. You brought that man of God. When he comes in your house, things die. But you're having oil because of him. You understand? And true to form again, God proved himself true. He brought the boy back to life. And he told the woman, your son lives. So anyway, back to what I was trying to say. God consumes everything. God consumes the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Literally, God just took everything. And the next verse says, And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, the Lord, he is the God, and the Lord, he is the God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's where my sermon begins. That day, Ahab went back home and told Jezebel what had happened. Now, let me talk about this woman a little bit, Jezebel. How many of you know that Jezebel was a daughter to one man called Ephbaal? 
Ethbal was the father of Jezebel. Ethbal, the Hebrew Ethbal means with Baal. That means he was one with Baal. You understand what I'm saying? Jezebel means Baal rules. Baal is exalted. So the man with Baal begat a girl who exalted Baal. And Ahab, the man of God, goes after that kind. Now, interestingly, Jezebel has two definitions in the Hebrew. One is one that exalted Baal, but also the other one also means the unchastened one, the undisciplined one. You understand what I'm saying? Before you enter marriage, examine yourself with God and say, God, am I a disciplined wife? Will I be a disciplined? Will I have a chastening? You remember even in Peter he talks about the same? When he's talking about wives? Huh? When he's talking about the disciplining as men behold your chest conversation coupled with fear whose adorning is not in the outward fine uh, dressing of apparel of gold and silver but the inward heart out of which is the incorruptible the gentle and meek spirit which in the eyes of god is priceless for the women of old and know themselves this way even as sarah addressed her husband abraham as my lord they behold your chest conversation Jezebel is the unchastened one, the one which is not disciplined in the spirit. And how do you know that a woman is not disciplined in the spirit? She's corruptible. She's corruptible by cheap talk. She's corruptible by gossip. Don't even be corrupted by the weakness of your husband. If your husband has done enough to you to be consumed by his evil to revenge, then you're not a helper suitable. Listen, if you're not ready to withstand things in marriage, don't even waste time. Stay single. The Lord prefers you that way. He will use you. No man is predictable. No man. I'm not saying that means they are bad. But no man is what? Predictable. If you think you're going to predict him, try you understand what I'm saying? That doesn't mean that the man should be bad or that he should behave badly. Also that one, there's a lecture for us men. Eh? We have to be serious. You understand? But what I'm trying to say here is, Jezebel, the spirit, is the unchastened one. That means any person, any woman who is not disciplined in the spirit has Jezebel. It's there. You just don't know. It will come out. On a good day, it will come out. Give it time. Praise the Lord. So, some men are deceived by... <laughs> I'm submitted. Eh? Hey, praise God. But am I making some sense? No offense, women. No offense. Jezebel, Jezebel has many facets. Eh? The spirit. I remember one time telling you she submits to only that which she can control. That's one facet of Jezebel. She submits to that which she can control. If she can't control something, and that one is on both men and women, some people, if they are not in control of something, they can't sit in that ministry. If they don't have an opinion in the ministry, they cannot sit in that ministry. Or if their opinion is not regarded, they cannot sit in that ministry. And as a man of God, if you listen to those ones, they can destroy you and your ministry. Because many of them are not working by the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Deeper than that, there's also something I've seen about Jezebel. Hmm? It's something that is hidden, but as you continue to know God, it, it comes out. Eh? Do you know there are people who have a way of acting like they seek to help, eh? yet in the process of wanting to help, they want to throw you in the, in the very heat of the frying pan you're in. Eh? Have you been around such people? We are trying to help you. You see for us, we are trying to help you. You do this, so that we shall help you. But the only reason is that, that's why the Bible says she had prophets. They were not independent of themselves, even though they were worshippers of Baal. They had to submit themselves to her first before they would go to Baal. Can you believe that? You understand what I'm saying? So there's many, 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 many things about this woman. And uh, over time I always share some. Eh? Today I'm going to give you one. That day, 
Ahab saw God. He saw the God of Israel. And he knew that there was trouble. He went back and told Jezebel what had happened. How do I know that Ahab that day changed? Even though the Bible says he did more evil than any king before him. How do I know that? You remember fast forward in 2 Kings when he wants to take Naboth's vineyard and Elijah comes to him and then Naboth says, Oh, my enemy, you have appeared. <laughs> and Elijah tells him, Because you're trying to take this man's whatever, God is going to destroy you and your kingdom. This is going to happen to you. Then he said that the dog shall lick uh, Jezebel's blood on the walls of Jezreel in the same place uh, where Naboth was killed. And then he tells him also that anybody who is after you, the dog shall lick or, and eat of their flesh. Do you know when God, when God judged Ahab, everybody who yielded to the spirit of Ahab and the wickedness of Jezebel, the Lord pronounced judgment over. That's why I tell people, be careful when you side with wicked people. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Be careful when you side with wicked people. When God passed judgment on Ahab, he did not only pass it on him, he says, and everyone that is after Ahab shall be killed, and the dogs shall eat, and the fowls of the air shall feast of his flesh. Everyone who is after. Not everybody who was under Ahab was after Ahab. Not everybody who is with wicked people is actually wicked. Do you know that? Not everybody. For example, there was a man who Elijah meets later, it was Obadiah. Obadiah was a governor in the household. He feared the Lord greatly. He used to serve Ahab. He was a governor under the leadership of Ahab, but he used to serve Ahab, but he used to fear the Lord. He was not a man after the patterns of who? Ahab. In fact, the Bible says that at one particular point, when Jezebel uh, sought to kill the prophets of God, one day he hid a hundred prophets and 50 each in a cave and fed them all through until they were safe to go back into their hiding. Those 100 were among the 7,000 that were hid that Elijah did not know. So Obadiah was a man who feared the Lord. When God was passing judgment on Ahab, he told him, anybody who is after you, I shall consume. The dogs shall eat of their flesh and the fowls of the air shall consume. Why? Because in the same kingdom, there were people who were serving Ahab, but they were not wicked. But in that same kingdom, there were people who were serving Ahab and they were wicked. That's why I told you, don't lose your life over a wicked man. Do not lose your life over a wicked man. If you're in a company and you see a guy working wickedness, don't side with him. Don't, no, 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 no. Serve your boss, but don't be wicked like him. Some of us over the years, we served all kinds of people. But there is a point where a man of God will start doing this and say, no, 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 man of God, I honor, I love you, but I'm not going for that. Why? Because I don't want the judgment of God to fall on you and come and consume me too. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, him that dies of Ahab in the city, the dog shall eat. Now when you read the Hebrew there for dies of Ahab, it's he that has submitted and yielded up to the spirit of Ahab. The same received the same judgment. So that's why I'm telling you, when you see somebody, even if you have a boss above you, and they start to do certain wickedness, separate yourself. It doesn't mean that you stop working in the company. No, it only means that, yes, let them stay wicked, stay true. Stay someone who fears God. Hallelujah. If you are in contact with certain men of God and realize that this man of God is doing certain things that are of wickedness, do not go after him in the mind. You know, some people don't understand that submission is not foolishness. Some people think that submit to us even in our wickedness. That's not so. Don't be wicked because your man of God is. Separate yourself from that and still serve him. Some will serve Eli. God judged Eli. God judged the sons of Eli, but God did not judge Samuel because Samuel did not carry the wickedness of that household. Stay away from wicked things. Tell a neighbor, stay away from wicked things. Stay away from wicked things. Now, to tell you that Ahab had changed, the moment Elijah tells him that God has judged your household and everything, the Bible says he told himself, and he put himself in such clothes and went in repentance. And the Lord went back and told him, I shall not judge him. This judgment shall not come in his time. It shall come in the time of his children. I think Ahab, from the day he saw God consumed by fire, he knew that the God of Elijah was alive. He knew it. He knew it. So, now this is a man who is in a state where he's a good man. He has understood how God works. But he yields to the spirit of Jezebel anyway because 
Jezebel was his wife, the daughter of Baal. Now, this is something that shakes me to the bone. The day God has consumed all these things with fire, and there is nothing left to eat, and everybody bowed their uh, head to God and said, God is the Lord. The next verse says, And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, so they, they, they killed them at the brook of Kishon. And the next verse says, uh, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. He went, and after three years, that was the second sign that happened. The prophets were killed. God had consumed things where there was wood and water. And on that very day, God sent rain that had been held up by three years. And if you read earlier in the chapters, the animals of Ahab and the kingdom had started to die because people did not have rain. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says Elijah ran faster than the what? Now, we skip to the 19th chapter. All of this has happened. Ahab has seen it. He knows this God is serious. Ahab goes and tells Jezebel all that Elijah had done. I don't think that when Ahab was talking to Jezebel about what Elijah had done, he was speaking spitefully about the prophet. I think he was honoring. He was scared. He was afraid. Baal was beaten before our eyes. And what Jezebel could have answered could have defined whether that kingdom was changed or not. Because if she had had a sort of fear, that would have also woken up Ahab to serve God. But what happened? And with all, she told him how the prophets were slain with a sword. And then Jezebel sent a messenger. Listen. And to Elijah. She has had everything the Lord has done in the life of Elijah. Everything I've shared with you. That man and level of anointing. The Bible says, let the gods do to me. This is Jezebel saying. And more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow at this time. Let the gods kill me if by tomorrow at the same time I've not killed the prophet, the man, the woman of God. Elijah was scared out of his body because of the words that were pronounced by this dear woman. You understand what I'm saying? It sobered on himself finally, but in 24 hours he was gone it came into him that actually in fact the scriptures tell us that Elijah runs away and when Elijah runs away he tells God I want to die he told him okay instead of Jezebel killing me you kill me now because I'm alone you, you understand what I'm saying he, he said you know what kill me because I'm alone because what does it profit for me to die under the hand of this wicked woman praise the Lord and this is something interesting. I hope you're following the story. Because I'm sure something beautiful at the end. Now, this is interesting. As Elijah is asking God, kill me. Uh, I requested him that he might die. It is enough, O oh Lord, take away my life. For I'm not better than my father's. This is something interesting. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, the Bible says an angel came and touched the man who wanted to die and told him, arise and eat. Eat. Don't die. Eat. You see? And the Bible says, And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals, and a cruise of... Never name that man, eh? He just woke up for breakfast this way. Nobody has cooked. Me, no, no. Angels and ravens are cooking for the anointed. Name Okama. Quick in those days, where I will wake up one day and I enter my kitchen and I find bacon and eggs, some little pork chops and ooh, some glass of juice and what? Carando zeba katalaba Somebody say God bring it. No, seriously. God loved the man that the cake was baked. Na <laughs> yemu kama. And it's not the first time men have eaten food cooked by God. Remember the disciples? They found when Jesus had already prepared bread and fish. They sent Anyway. But who is understanding what I'm saying? Now, I want you to follow this because it's becoming beautiful. The angel tells him, arise and what? Eat. For the journey is what? Is long. 
Now, some people at that particular point thought, wait, so the angel was giving Elijah uh, enough food to eat to run away from Jezebel? Because look at this, look at godly food. The Bible says the food sustained Elijah for 40 days. Banana. You eat one meal and for 40 days you kawa. Those of you who are going in a 40 day fast. You allow me, hallelujah. He went in the strength of that meat for 40 days and 40 nights and to horror of the mountain of God. God is pushing this man to a certain direction. This man is running away from Jezebel. His brain is telling him Jezebel is going to what? Kill you. And those who read the scripture might think that the angel is giving Elijah food for 40 days to run non-stop. But if it was a quickening, God had displayed it before in scripture when the rain came. You remember when the rain came? The Bible says the strength of the Lord, the hand of the Lord sat on Elijah and he ran faster than any horse. So if it was just quickening, he didn't need 40 days to get to Mount Horeb. 40 means trial. The Lord was trying his spirit into a higher responsibility. And I'm going to open you to that. Now ignore the words of Jezebel. God was trying to test Elijah in a higher place because the number 40 represents trial. Those were days the Lord was trying him. You understand what I'm saying? Now, 40 days and 40 nights he runs, he goes into Horeb, the mount of God. His brain is telling him, the angel has fed me to what? So that I can run from Jezebel. And he came hither into the cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? That means, when he lodged in the cave, his mentality was still telling him, run away from the wicked woman, run away from the death of this woman, hide yourself in a cave, because the prophets used to hide in caves. Remember, even their hundred were hidden in caves. So there is something with caves and prophets. And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord of hosts. This is Elijah answering God. I've been very jealous for the Lord of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars and slain the prophets with the sword, and I, even I, am left alone, and seek they my life to take it away. And he said, go forth, stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord, this was him saying, my problem is they want to kill me. God said, okay, go up the mountain and stand before me. Because your issue is you. Think all these 40 days I've been running you around. I'm running you around because of what Jezebel said. And in your mind you think, I'm giving you strength to run away from Jezebel. Go on the mountain. And the Bible says, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountains. What is it doing to Elijah? What is he trying to show him? A great wind rent the mountains, and broke the pieces of rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind of the earthquake, the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after that, the earthquake of fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after that, the fire, still small voice. He's shaking mountains, breaking mountains and rocks, just passing by. Just passing by. A mountain crumbles into nothingness. He's trying to say like that, my power is way bigger than the words Jezebel has spoken upon your life. Come on, somebody. My words are way bigger than that person who said that you're not going to make it. I didn't even regard what that person said. I had a bigger plan for you than what that person said upon your life. But you think that I'm giving you enough meat to run away from the words of Jezebel. Jezebel is a small factor. When I pass, mountains break. When I pass, fire comes. When I pass, earthquakes come. And you think that your problem is still Jezebel. So, if he had not entered the cave, the Lord would not have asked him a question. He would have continued to lead him. Even in his ignorance of where he's going, God would have continued to lead him. But because he entered the cave and he still demonstrated the spirit of fear, because of the words Jezebel spoke on his life, he said, okay, let me first show you who I am. Earthquake, fire, and was not in it. Then the still small voice comes. And when the still small voice comes, look at how God is talking. It was so, when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. He just wrapped himself. Eh? And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What are you doing here? Second time. And he answered again, the next verse. I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, 
because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain the prophets with the sword. And I, even I, am left, and I, I seek my life to take it away. Second time he said it, and the Lord said unto him, Listen to what the Lord said unto him. Second time he has said it, he showed him fire, he showed him earthquake, he showed him the breaking of, of the mountain, and the man did not get it. What did the Lord do the second time when he asked him and he repeated the same story? The Lord told him, go and return your way to the wilderness of Damascus. I'm telling you, Elijah, that in spite of this Jezebel nonsense you're telling me, she's not even in my idea. Jezebel is not even in my idea. Don't even waste time. Go back to the wilderness I'm trying to take you to. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael as king of Syria. And anoint Jehu over Israel, the son of Nimshi. And anoint Elisha. Who shall be anointed in your room? I think I need to replace you. I think I need to what? To replace you, you're playing in the things of the spirit. Start now working on a successor. Because I don't know how to work with the spirit. And he says, and whosoever shall escape the sword of Hazael, he shall not escape the sword of Jehu. And whoso escapes the sword of Jehu, he shall not escape the sword of Elisha. And the next verse says, yet I have left me, listen, 7,000. So that means, if Jezebel has to defeat, eh? he has to first defeat the Syrian king, Hazael, then defeat the Israelite king, Jehu, then get to Elisha, who is your spiritual son, then get to 7,000 guys, then get to you. He said, and yet, now are you following me? And yet I have 7,000 more people. How many prophets is Jezebel going to kill before she dies? How will she escape the Syrian? If she escapes the Syrian, how will she escape Jehu? How will she go through your sons? How will she defeat your sons? How will she defeat all the other prophets who are hidden before they get to you, the visible one? Because you are ahead of all the 7,000. That's why he's trying to tell Elijah. And indeed, if you read the story, you realize that Jezebel was killed under the sword of Jehu. Jehu walked in the city. Jezebel beautified herself. Again, Bananje, outward appearance. The Bible says that morning, you go to the day Jezebel died. Eh? She beautified herself because she thought, as Jehu is coming, eh, I, I am fearing he will kill me, but I can slay him with looks. Mwe? Mwe? Some people think that their looks will save them from judgment. Cut it. Beautify yourself. Praise God. Now the Bible tells us that that day Jezebel put on fire. Let me, let me go there. And when Jehu came to Jezreel, where the prophecy was given, and remember even when Elijah told later Ahab that she's going to be killed, the Lord has judged her already, you, you realize Elijah was already delivered from the words of Jezebel. At that particular point he had sobered up. Now, Jehu was come to Jezreel. Jezebel heard of it. She painted her face. Tired her head and looked out of the window. And the Bible says, Jehu entered at the gate and said, Had Zimri peace? Who slew his master? And the Bible says, And he lifted up his face to the window and said, He asked, the, Guys, the people were serving her. The people were serving her. Who is on my side? The Bible says, and there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. Eunuchs were the people who were serving Jezebel. They were serving her, but they had already changed sides in their heart. Eh? And the Bible says, and he said, throw her down. The eunuchs just got Jezebel, threw her down. The same people she was sending for water and says, yes, madam. But the angry people, they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trod under her foot. He didn't even strike war. He just sent a word and said, Who is for me? Throw her down. See how strong the same woman who made Elijah run away, that same 
same woman was judged by the same prophetic word on the anointing on Jehu. He just said, who is on my... You see how powerful the queen of Israel went down. Throw her down. They, without consideration. The Bible tells us, and he ate, drank, and he wanted to honor her because she was a daughter of the king. He understood principles. He says, bury her, for she is a king's daughter. Let me respect the kingly anointing. And they went to bury her, but the Bible says they found no more of her than the skull, listen, the feet and the thumbs. That's all they found. For the Bible says, next verse, they came again and told him, this is the word of the Lord which is spake by his servant, Elijah the Tishibite, saying, in the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say that this was Jezebel. That means she remained only with a skull, hands, the things dogs couldn't eat, and feet. Anywhere there was flesh, the dogs ate to fulfill the prophetic word that was spoken by the Tishibites. What am I trying to tell you? That same woman told Elijah. Now this is what cut me most. That same woman told Elijah. I was teaching, now I'm preaching. That same woman told Elijah that let it be done to me by the gods if you're not carcass tomorrow morning. If you're not dead tomorrow morning. Those words ringed in a prophet's ear. God shows the prophet, I'm not even on Jezebel because she is nothing to the destiny I've placed upon your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? And here it is. That some of you, you've been held by words that people spoke. I've given him this week. That one, eh? you will see their end. Listen, do they know who they are speaking about? Do they know the relationship that you have with God? Do they know how far you're coming from with God? You look at her family. You watch her children. They shall fail. What is what? Are you a woman of God? Are you a believer in God? Do, were you born again? Do you receive the free gift of righteousness and grace? Do you judge your heart and before God know that your conscience is clear? It does not matter what they say about you. Woman of God! The Bible says that the causeless cast shall not alight. Do you know what that means? That the causeless cast shall not alight? It means some of you, you fear when people cast you. But over oh, and if uncle's cast him, who is going to die? Let me tell you, even if it is your own mother and father, if before God you are right, it will not alight. I'm not saying disrespect your parents. I'm not saying disrespect people. I'm not saying go work in wickedness and expect that otherwise you might be in Jezebel's place and then they judge you for nothing and you die. I'm not saying that be funny, but I'm only saying that there's people who have done nothing. There are people, you look at your workplace and somebody says things about you, you don't even know why they're saying what they're saying. You look in your family, somebody says things about you, you don't even know why they're saying what they're saying about you. Some people think that everything that is spoken is true. A man of God brought me foolish rumors. Oh, 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 this pastor, this pastor. I told him, look, when a man of God raised up in the country, they said that he was homosexual. The second one also raised, they said he was a homosexual. The another one also raised, they said he was a homosexual. I said, look, if that's an attack on the Lord's saints, and I don't know, I was not there, I didn't see it. It's none of my business. If I saw that spoken, but I didn't see it. What makes you think that when you raise to a certain level, they will not call you one? Instead of fighting for the saints of God, we are the ones standing guns to those same men of God. And guess what? The Lord spoke to me something very important. And I started to realize that all the men who have fought these men, many of them are dying before the men they fought. Either in the ministry or physically. Do you understand what I'm saying? They are dying before the men they fought. They are dying before the men they fought. Some of you don't understand. Let me explain the mystery here. Open Psalms 140 verses 1. This was David praying to God. David was making an honest, honest prayer to God. And he said, this was a man praying. I want to show you how Satan works. Right? 
Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Listen. Which imagine, there are people who just imagine mischief in their hearts. Do you know there are people who continually imagine you dying? They imagine you in a car accident. They imagine your marriage failing. Some of you are also here. When you get enemies, you imagine them dying. You're wicked. Deliver your mind. Hello? Do you know there are people right now who are continually imagining your downfall? Do I have a witness in the house? Because there are people who are continually imagining. They imagine continually. They gather together for war. What does that mean? Some of them sit together and then they start talking about your fall. You understand what I'm saying? They discuss you in your absentia. And the Bible says, and they have, listen, they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent, adder's poison. He says, adder's poison is under their lips. You remember when Adam and Eve were tempted in the garden? In which form did Satan come? As a serpent. In fact, the Bible says he is a serpent. He calls him a serpent. And the poison of a serpent is the lips of accusers. The poison of serpents. Eh? What they call poison. I'll give you an example. A couple of days ago I was in a vision. And I found two snakes. Happy this was in me. And then I crushed. You remember how the scripture says that the son of, of a woman shall crush the head of the serpent under his feet, his heel. He shall bruise his heel. I killed these two. Both snakes I killed. Both of them. They died immediately. I crushed the head. And in the second snake when I was killing it, its poison gets onto my skin. You understand? And the poison started to want to dig through my skin to kill me. But even in the vision, I didn't die. <laughs> the devil is a liar. And so I woke up in the spirit and I said, God, what means this? He led me to Psalms 140. He told me that when you start to have victory, men will start accusing and speaking foolishness. That is the poison of the adder. It's under their lips. It's the words they'll start. Some of you, don't understand. Now, for me, I thank God that in the dream it was clear. Eh? The poison was not of a living snake. The poison was of a snake I'd already killed. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? What I'm trying to say is that anybody who speaks about you, you have already defeated. You have already. Do I have a witness? And let them watch you as you continue to grow when they are giving you days and months and weeks on that job, years in that marriage, weeks in that relationship, weeks in that business. The Bible says, by tomorrow I be killed if Elijah is not dead. God is very comical. God, God has humor. Look at the comical humor of God. Eh? He makes sure that Elijah doesn't even test death. The man is taken up by a wild wind. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the man goes descends in glory. And Elijah did not die. 1999, Elijah is not dead. 2000, Elijah is not dead. 2018, I'm still preaching about the same Elijah. He wanted to kill years ago. The same God who began that work in you. He shall see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. You will outlive the words of those that hate you. Shout hallelujah. Elijah is still alive. Hallelujah. And the Bible says it shall come in the spirit of Elijah. Where is Jezebel? She's unrecognizable. What am I trying to say? God's plan for you and the words they've spoken about you. God doesn't even know that Jezebel spoke. He took this man all the way to the wilderness of Damascus. Because he needed to find another prophet to pour an anointing oil. He, he wanted, he needed to anoint Jehu. He needed to anoint Hazael. And Elijah thinks that God is helping him run away from Jezebel. Yet indeed God is helping him, pushing him to divine purpose. To anoint the people that must be anointed for the continuation of the gospel. God was not even in the deal of dealing with Jezebel. Jezebel was only one word from his mouth. That's why he says, and every tongue... Listen, every tongue that shall rise against you, 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 Elijah, shall condemn. 
The moment they say, you're going to fail, also pronounce. 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 Just that tongue and say, I rebuke that statement. Don't just say, okay, no, don't even fear. The moment they say you're going to end, you say, no, no, no. In the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke that tongue that has said that I'm going to end. I decree and I declare that you will live. I don't even want you to die, but you will live to see me prosper. For the Lord prepares a table in the presence of his enemies. Sometimes that table is not good when they are dead. Sometimes it's important for God to... Some will die, yes. But there are some I want God to keep, to keep for me. Hallelujah. Keep for me so that they want to go out. And there is nothing in the world they can do. Do I have a witness? You'll go up. They watch you. They talk. You continue going up. They watch you. They talk. The Amawad get over. And then they continue. It is beautiful when they are speaking. But they don't have consequence. That's why some of them... I don't pray that God kills them, no. Some we have handed over, the Bible says like Paul, because we, we discovered the more they live, the more wicked they will be. So we ask God to take them to heaven quickly, so that they don't stay wicked. But there are some you know they will have repentance one day. God, create that cut table, so that you enjoy yourself when they are watching. It's better they stay alive and watch you prosper. And they are what, you know, do you know people speaking things and then, Everyone says, hold on now, this is serious. And then God changes your story every year. Every year. He changes your story. Until one day the people they told come and say, but you know what, you lied. <laughs> Let it happen to you in the mighty name of Jesus. The testimony of Elijah outlived the threat of Jezebel. You will outlive the words of your enemy. Now I'm speaking, prophesying on your life. You will outlive the words of your enemies. I decree and I declare that the poison of the other will not have consequence on you. I decree and I declare that you have victory even before you start. Jezebel is defeated even before you raise your hand and finger. And I declare and I declare that you will rebuke every evil word that has been spoken upon your life. If your conscience is clear before God, then you have no accountability with man because no man has a vote on your future. Any word that was spoken about your life that you're a thief, you're a prostitute, you're what, you're a murderer, you're a liar, you're this, you're that, I decree and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, may God give opportunity for those words to change to the same people that accused you without you raising your finger. Because many are at your side than on the other side. Hazel is on your side. Jehu is on your side. 7,000 of them are on your side. Jehovah God is on your side. And the Bible says, and if the Lord be for us, who can be against us? I declare and I declare that those evil words that were spoken upon you and your family, the Lord changes them. The words that were spoken upon your children, the Lord changes them. The words that were spoken at, about you at your workplace, the Lord changes them. The words that were spoken upon you and your ministry, the Lord changes them. Every wicked word spoken behind your back, my God has given me the mandate to tell you this morning that it shall turn to your good and only shall they live to see the carcass of the words that were spoken upon your life eaten on the wall of Jezreel and they shall not be recognizable but yet still your name shall flourish your name shall go far and men shall know that you existed and they shall not carry a name neither a title on their life because the God who began that work in you with your mistakes and, and successes, he still knew that you are the right woman and man to finish that work in you. Listen, even if you have made mistakes, there is a forgiving God, there is a merciful God, make peace with God and repent in your own heart. And when you have repented, don't ever let a man talk you down and make you feel that you are less important or of least importance because you have made a mistake. God is not only faithful to forgive, but he is also just 
to wash away. I decree upon your life that your days ahead are better. In spite of your history, give the Lord a mighty Clap like it has happened already! Come on, clap, 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 clap! Clap, 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 clap! Clap and receive the word! Receive the word of God! Receive it! 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 Say it is mine! Say it is mine! That word is mine! It is upon my life! It is upon my story! It's upon my family! It's upon my history! It's upon my children! My grandchildren! My ministry! My business! My career! In the mighty name of Listen, the Lord is not concerned by the days they've given you. The Lord is concerned about your assignment. Hello? The Lord is not concerned about those that must kill you tomorrow morning because they have no charge over your life. He's concerned about you fulfilling what he's promised in your life. That is why the Bible says, He that began that good work in your life it's good he shall see to accomplishment to the day of christ amen somebody touch your stomach i feel there are people just touch your stomach wherever you are i feel there's something i need to to release upon somebody's life whatever is inside you and has been hid for a time now and it is supposed to come out. For he says, out of you shall flow rivers of living water. I command that which is inside you to come out for the world to see. Prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, minister of God, I decree and I declare that I call out that which is in within you. And let it be for a manifestation, let it be for signs. And one of let it be potent. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.